Yes, I can see. Okay, great. Perfect. So um, thanks, everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Bass. I'm the Executive Director at Datasight. And I'm joined by uh, Sarala, who is our Director of uh, Product Engineering. Um, we wanted to talk to you a bit today about um, traversing the PID graph. So the PID graph um, was launched last year. This was a deliverable under Project Freya and something really excited for us. And traversing this PID graph with Datasite Commons. Um, apologies, I noticed there's already a typo on the first slide. That's not a good start, but um, I haven't spelled Commons correctly. Um, but <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. Um, we... Um, Wanted to uh, talk through that, um, work through a few use cases, and um, also do a quick quiz and make it a bit interactive. Um, so just what we're going to do, um, so welcome. Um, we'll start answering the poll. So Tom, if you can make the poll live, that'll be great. You'll see at the bottom of your screen that there's a poll that's been posted. And if you could choose which use case you would like to see and um, we will choose two of them and just show you that in um in data site commons and also end with the quiz um so um your role um is to listen engage in comments and um, feel free to ping us in the um chat ask questions as we're going um type in slack we also are happy to carry over questions this is very much um, something that we are working on actively at Datasight and really looking for feedback and um, looking to evolve um, through the course of this year. Um, the poll is active, I see that. And the Kahoot quiz, I will provide a link later. Um, you can use your mobile phone and I'll explain the details when we get there. Um, so. To start um, to talk a bit about the PID graph and data site commons. And so what's really important to, I guess, emphasize is that persistent identifiers and the associated metadata are the essential component for the implementation of their principles. And it's really, really important that we focus on the metadata and the services related to that metadata to make sure that we can realize and really deliver value and demonstrate fair principles in action. So research is already a graph. We have um, an institution, we have an author that may have an affiliation, they may author a publication, they may have used a data set, they may have reused software, and we know that this graph exists um, out there and this is how research is produced. Um, so into the PID graph and so um, there is often questions around well what is the difference between a knowledge graph and a PID graph and so we really look at a knowledge graph being a graph that connects um, really concepts together and a PID graph focusing on the persistent identifiers and metadata and making those relationships um, clear and then using a PID graph um, in various contexts can power various knowledge graphs and we've seen a lot of um, other communities or domain specific communities building out knowledge graphs and leveraging what we have in the PID graph. So that's um, really exciting to see. Um, having unique persistent identifiers for researchers and the outputs um, is crucial to connecting the pieces um, of the research together. Um, PIDs, are, PIDs already have this potential to make these connections and so we haven't really taken the full advantage of this. We know that an individual published a paper because that is in the metadata. But what if we built this into a graph? And this is what we've done with the PID graph is that we have really enabled the discovery of connections more than two hops away. So we can identify that this person published this paper that we use this data set that was funded by this institution um, that was generated with these protocols and software and really graph that out and support those use cases. Most importantly, what needs to happen to make sure that we can really realize the benefits of the PID graph? Well, we need to pay, to the, pay close attention to the relationships in the metadata. And so here we're talking about citations and references and the type of relation that we have between those identifiers in the metadata. And this is really important that then this helps us to 
um, build out these connections and we'll show you that in action in a moment. Um, so I will switch over to Sarala. Thanks, Matt. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so at the moment, um, the PID graph connects three types of identifiers, the DOIs, um, ORCIDs, and raw identifiers. And the DOIs identify um, data sets, publications, software, funders, etc. in the PID graph. And the ORCIDs identify the people and raw identifiers identifies um, at the organizations. So data site commons is really the front end interface to explore the PID graph. So you can use the data site commons to find um, uh, PIDs and their connection, connected information um, as Matt referred to before. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. So let me take you through an example to show you how you can uh, use the ASAC Commons to explore the PID graph. So here, I'm just um, uh, looking for a data set uh, using part of a title. You can use um, a PID uh, to search or um, a text, uh, some piece of text from the abstract as well. Um, so if you have multiple results, then you can filter your data set using the facets and each um, uh, each result has some relevant metadata with it. And one of the most exciting things about data site commons is how you can explore those connections. Um, Matt, if you can go to the next slide. So, so here I've, I've selected a specific data set and you can see the citation information and how many views that we've had and how many downloads there has been. So it's really pulling in uh, different information together and actually displaying it in a way that you can easily see. Um, if you go to the next slide, Matt. Um, so here uh, you can see uh, the list of citations. So uh, it, the, this specific uh, journal article is, is citing the data set that I showed you before. Uh, if you go to the next slide, thanks, sorry. Okay, so here, and um, we also connect the authors um, and organizations using um, ORCID and raw identifiers where possible. So in this specific example, we have been able to map all the organizations uh, to raw identifiers, which means uh, now you can explore these connected organizations. Um, as you can see in this example, we have um, we don't have the links to the authors, but if the links are available, you can see the author research profiles and their connections. Next slide, please. So here I'm using uh, Shirley's uh, profile. So you can see her research outputs uh, list and their citations, the views, the downloads, the counts of her research outputs. So you can see how you can hop from one thing to another and find out a lot more information. Um, next slide, please. So Commons really uh, leverage from this citation and usage information. So here we're searching for, um, for research outputs that cites a specific grant from the European Commission. It shows you all the associated outputs, their citations, views, and downloads. So you can really see how powerful uh, data site commons can be. So I'll now hand over to Matt to go through uh, the most watered use cases live so you can see data site commons in action. Thanks, Sarala. And, um... You know, I think one thing to maybe share is that the, the underlying PID graph is an open API that can be used. It's built on GraphQL techni technology and is um, available for use by the community. Commons is our interface that we've built on top of it for our members and our community to make use of and leverage the PID graph. But we're also interested in collaborating and working with, the, with others. 
Um, so I'm going to make an attempt to now uh, do somewhat of a live um, demonstration. I am going to cheat slightly in that I've got bookmarked URLs for the um, use cases. I wanted to see the two um, top use cases. So um, let's start. The top one is as a user, I would like to view a specific DOI with uh, the related objects. So let me pull that up. Um, and I will switch my sharing. Sorry, while I multitask for a moment. And the other one was related to a researcher. Okay, so um, let me switch sharing screen. Thank you for your patience. Um, Tom, I think I have to stop sharing and then if I get kicked out, will you add me again? Uh, oh, there we go, okay. And I can share a specific tab. Um, yep, if you just share your screen, I can manage which one is on the stage as it were. Okay, so um, there we go use case is sorry okay so uh, let me just make sure that uh, is this clear to everyone everyone can see this yep loud and clear okay perfect so um this is a specific um doi that we've queried um and so um it's pulled up the doi um it has um, all of the creators, so we can link through to the creators in Commons and drill down into that. So that's one example. Um, this is now the individual. Um, we could also go and look at the funding. So we've got the specific um, award as an example. We could drill into that. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these sort of rabbit holes. We have the ability to export the metadata from the user interface share it um, there's the citation and the different citation formats that we can use um, it's got information about the reference here um, it tells us that this was referenced by a journal article and you can see that this doi was registered um, on february 2015 via crossref and you could also then go into that and view that information there so that's the first use case um, the second use case that was um, asked about was an individual. Um, so looking at an individual, uh, you could link out to different profiles um, that we've been able to pull through for that individual. So we could link out to the ORCID record and view that. Um, there's um, various other profiles, Impact Story, uh, Euro PMC. Um, we can see the aggregated citations, views and downloads for this individual. These are the citations, views and downloads that we know about in the PID graph. So it's not saying it's all inclusive and I'm very cautious about what we do in terms of impact, but it's just something that we found in the work that we did with um, the folks at ADU in developing um, some of these uh, personal profiles and that this was something that was very useful. And so this has also been incorporated into Data Site Commons. Um, listing out the work, so we can see here both a journal article and a data set used here. You can see also if we have language, we also surface that here. Um, maybe something to mention also about the uh, usage and downloads. Um, we um, are getting most of this through make data count. So as an example, Dryad uh, push through all the usage and download information into um, our system and we surface that. Um, Zenodo is starting to do the same and many other different um, repositories. We are also doing some work in make data count three to make this easier for repositories to push this into open infrastructure so that we can all reuse this um, within the PID graph. Um, so that's um, the two specific use cases. What we'll do is I can post in the chat um, just as an example. So the other use cases, I'll post those briefly in the chat um, over here. So um, uh, will this work? Um, oh, it doesn't like it because it's over 500. So 
500 characters. Let me just post that and then I'll post the last two uh, in here. So um, if you want to explore those, um, you can do so also um, yourself. Um, so um, with that, what we'll do now is we'll jump into a quick quiz um, using Kahoot. And then we really want to make sure that it's a bit interactive and we can share and share some of your thoughts. We can also share some of our thinking about where we're going and particularly from Sarada's perspective and thinking about the future, what we're thinking about. Um, so if I jump into Kahoot and I share the screen. Um, so if you can all go ahead and go to Kahoot. Um, one thing to maybe mention is your name will come up on screen. So you're welcome to use an anonymous name. Um, and um, just enter the game pin, kahoot.it, um, enter the game pin, and then we'll get going. Um, so we'll see people coming up as you join. There we go. Two players so far. I like the name Fair. <laughs> it's a good one. I'll give it one more moment. Um, let's try to get to 25 participants and then we'll kick it off. Just checking, um, you can see my screen. Um, is that right? Um, Tom, if you can, or if somebody can just type in the chat that you can see my screen. I know I've switched to the Cloudcast tab. I can, I can see you see screen sharing. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's start it off. So on your mobile phone, you'll see the options come up. The questions will be on the screen in front of you. So here we go. Three, two, one. The first question. What can you use the pig graph to discover? 30 seconds to answer. The relationship between an individual, data set and institution, all of the above, a data set, an individual data set, an institution related to another individual and funder. 10 seconds to go, make sure you get your answers in. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the right answer was all of the above. And so um, to look at the tally, um, so if I'd in first place and we'll see how it goes. So the quicker you answer, the more points you get. But if you answer it incorrectly, you get zero points. Um, second question of five, what is the data site, comment, data site front end service for querying the PID graph? Data site commons, Fabrica, Google Scholar, data site search. 20 seconds to go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Great. I think most people answered there. So the right answer is data site commons. We will be retiring data site search at the end of this year. We will make sure that all of the functionality in data site search um, comes across to data site commons and be working with the community to make that transition through the course of this year. So, um, so if I would still in first place, um, a few close followers. Third question, what content is currently not available in the data site PID graph? Repositories, organizations, researchers, publications, and data sets. Four, 
15 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is repositories. So we are doing a lot of work and um, engaging with the community and various stakeholders to understand how we can pull in repository information. I know there's been discussions around repository identifiers and also really looking for um, the community to engage with us and, and find a way forward to make sure that we can bring this as, as an object into the vid graph and um, surface that in data site comments. Leon up into first place and uh, Kay has had a good answer streak into second place. Okay, um, second last question. What is the underlying technology used to build the data site pit graph? REST, Sparkle, OData, GraphQL. Five, four, three, two, one. Correct answer is GraphQL. Um, so this was a technology. Um, Martin Finner spent a lot of time with the partners um, in Freya um, evaluating the use cases. And the reason we chose GraphQL was specifically that it addressed the community use cases that we were trying to solve. Um, and enabled us to do that. It is an open source technology, um, which is also really important to us. Okay, quick tally, K into first place, um, moving into the final question, and then we'll open up for discussion. So the last and final question um, is a multiple selection. What other content will be added to the PID graph during 2021? Repositories, DOIs from other RAs. You can select more than one um, for this question. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the answer is both. Um, we are working actively with other RAs um, to make sure that we can bring in more um, DOIs. We are also working to incorporate repositories into the PID graph during 2021. So really exciting and looking forward to working with you all. Okay, so the um, rewards um, in third place, TMC, second place, Zafides, and in first place, we have K, well done. Um, obviously we don't know exactly who you are. Um, 99 was in fourth place and Leon was in fifth place. Um, and thanks for playing along with us. Okay, so I will now quickly uh, mute this so we don't have that background. And uh, just my headphones and get back to the slides. Um, Okay, you can see the screen, am I right? Perfect. Okay, so um, we've gone through the quiz. Um, so what next for data site comments? And I'll hand over to Sarada. Thanks, Matt. So so what, what next for data site comments? Um, so for this year, we have a couple of things planned. Um, we already mentioned this in our Kahoot quiz, so I'm guessing it won't be a surprise. So uh, data site uh, commons will be our main discovery platform and we will be consolidating data site uh, search into data site commons and also repository finder into uh, data site commons. Uh, so that which means we will be supporting searching for repositories and their connections within the uh, data site commons um, in, in sometime this year. Um, 
And one of the other things we are um, actively doing right now is we, we are continuing to grow our PID graph uh, by importing uh, DOIs from other um, RAs. So at the moment we have um, about 10 million DOIs from uh, I think 10 million or a bit more from Crossref, and we are actually adding as we go uh, because they have um, 100 million DOIs or 100 million DOIs. So this will, will take some time. So we'll have to iron out some of the um, uh, um, infrastructure uh, issues as we go forward. Um, and um, uh, we, I have, we have um, a data site uh, roadmap um, and it will be really good to hear your thoughts on um, uh, what you would like to see in data site commons going forward through the, the roadmap. That's my preferable way of collecting information, but you can also email uh, info at data site commons. Um, so it will be really good to hear what you can do, what you can't do, and you, what you would like uh, uh, to be able to do through data site commons uh, going forward. Thanks. Uh, shall we take some questions now? Yeah, so I was just looking or through a few. Type. I, Tom, we've got three minutes, am I right? Correct. You've got three okay. minutes and four questions. Okay, we'll jump through quickly. So are there plans to introduce more PID types into the PID graphs? If so, which ones? So um, this is sort of Sorala's domain, and but I'll maybe answer briefly that um, we would um, consider, you know, incorporating anything that um, our community would would like us to do. And so, being member driven, Sorales team has a fairly robust process, and that's why we have the roadmap up on screen um, to have those suggestions and making sure that that is a valid use case for our members and community. Um, and would absolutely consider that. Um, we we actually do have in the metadata other identifiers. Um, that exists, um, but maybe surfacing those a bit more could be something that, that we do um, and making them maybe standalone. Um, Sorala, feel free to jump in also. Um, there was a question about um, thinking on guidance where relationships sh should live. So there's, you know, an ORCA DOI relationship. Um, it could live in the DOI registry or both or standalone relationship store. Um, so a lot of the things that we're doing are stored in the event data um, API, um, making those connections, but obviously they exist in the various um, infrastructure services. Um, it's a good question, Chris. We, we don't have any clear guidance. Um, it's something that I think we should think about and, and the way forwards. Um, the key is that it exists in open infrastructure. I think that's a, a, an important foundational step but definitely some thinking as we go forwards and as, as work continues in this. Um, so Rale, just jump in, I'm shooting through based on time. Um, essential to the success of PIDGRAPH uh, is publication and harvesting of relationships. The Scrollix framework addresses part of the issue, publications, research data. Do you have any suggestions on how this can be expanded? Um, so yeah, ab absolutely. We are obviously very involved um, with with Scrollex and working very closely with Crossref on a lot of this, um, and working with various uh, groups. I know Shelley Stall, as an example from AGU, has been a, a big advocate for us for this to make these connections work. And and so it's a bit of a community shift. Also making sure that the publishers are are capturing the right relationships. We can also capture it downstream um, from a data site point of view. So our members can assert that relationship as well. So we can do it from both sides. But I think it is important that we try and make sure that at the publication that it is captured correctly and in a machine readable format within the Crossref metadata. And so that's the key piece there is um, getting that into the Crossref metadata. And the final question, are publishers in the PID graph? Um, so not publishers, but we do have um, at a journal level. Um, we haven't quite um, been, we haven't separated out the entity in um, being able to drill down into that, but it is exposed because it's in the metadata and we could expose more about the publishers. I guess the term publisher in our context is sometimes a repository from a data site point of view. Um, and so there is there is some exposure there, 
um, but you can't necessarily drill into, okay, give me this publisher and the related works. Um, that's not possible there um, just yet. So thanks, those are some nice ideas. And I know we one minute over, Tom, so I'll just say, go to datasite.org forward slash roadmap. Um, feel free to put in comments there, email us, would love to hear from you. Um, and thanks very much for joining. Thanks, Tom. Sorry. Thank no, no, no problem. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Sarah. And thanks to all our speakers in this session. I think it's been a really useful session. Um, uh, if you want to go and revisit it, it will be available uh, to watch later on. So great. Um, I'm going to end this session so people can move on to their next session. Thanks, everyone, for attending. And a round of applause. Cheers. Thank you all. Bye.